popular stat basketball users track is play call efficiency. However, an obstacle these users run into is that teams don't obviously run every single play in their playbook in every single game. So there will be scenarios where, as we have in this top right corner, situations where we have a play where it was not run at all, and that will clog up the offensive play call chart. However, there is a solution to that, and it is the unique string function in scripting. So if we come over here to this new method, I'm going to show you this new scripting function that will pull only the play calls that were run in a given game. So I'm going to open up my first um, button here. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that it is show output, which is ticked, not show name, show output. I'm then going to come to the scripting tab. And the first line of script that I'm going to do is put instances as a variable. And I'm going to put instances where row equals Canterbury Rams positions. This is me identifying the row where the play call labels are currently residing. So for me, that's Canterbury Rams positions. The next variable I'm going to put is string and then equals. Now, I will stop to note that the name of your variables doesn't actually matter. I just always name my variables something relevant to what I'm actually going to be executing in the script, just so it's easier to track. So variable string equals unique string. So that's our new scripting command. And then I'm going to put bracket. I'm going to put instances. So the identifying the instances in the row Canterbury Rams positions. I'm then in quotation marks going to put the name of the group where my play call rate, my play call labels reside. So for me, that is just play call. Then I'm going to put a comma. And I'm going to put the number of the first unique label I'm trying to find. So I'm going to put one here and then close the bracket. So what I'm doing is I'm putting unique string and I'm finding the first unique label in the group play call in the row Canterbury Rams positions. So it's working backwards. The first unique label in the group play call in the row Canterbury Rams positions. I'm then going to have one final line of script and it's going to be an if statement. So if string equals nothing at all. So if it cannot find a label in that group, show just a dash. If not, show the actual play that we're pulling from the string here. So pull the first unique label in the group play call in the row Canterbury Rams positions. So now when I press execute, you'll see the first unique label or the first unique play call populate in the slot, which for me is the label of flow. Now, if I copy the script down, all I have to change now to get the second unique play call in the group play call in the row Canterbury Rams positions is swap that one for a two. And even if I ran flow twice in a row, it's not gonna count that label as the second unique label because it's not unique. It's going to get the next unique label. So now when I press execute, we'll see that the next unique play call I ran was flow power. Copy this again, come down, and put three. So now it's going to get the third unique play call I ran. And I can keep doing this until I run out of play calls. So four, five, and we'll stop at six. So it's pulled my first six unique plays. Now when I get to a time when there's no longer a unique play call, it's just gonna give me this dash because I'm saying if that unique play call doesn't equal anything at all, just give me dash. If it does not equal nothing at all, give me the name of that unique play. So that's the unique string function and that's the best way I can use it in basketball. If you have any questions, please uh, contact your huddle representative to organize a training with one of our implementation consultants. Otherwise, I hope this video has sent you in the right direction. Thank you.